it's part three of the Centurion Avery. Today we're going to put the engine in and we're also going to do a few other bits and pieces like paint some other parts and one or two things like that. So Jack's busy painting away currently some of the brackets that hold on the air cleaners. Um, he's also done a lot of the water pipes and oil pipes. Also today we're going to fit the engine and we need to strip off all the bits and pieces before we can do that. Centurion starter motor. They are as rare as hen's teeth. They can, cost, they can cost up to a thousand pounds now if you smash them up. And they, uh, they're very, very weak, so you do tend to break them. So uh, that is a very valuable part. So we'll put that there in the rain to get red. <laughs> okay, so the engine's more or less ready now to fit in. We've put paper down so we don't mess up the uh, nicely, freshly painted engine bay. But first, we've got to lift the engine out of the lower half of the original packing crate. Right, so I'm about to lift this engine and put it in the tank. But all that's going through my mind is, if I drop it, this engine is going to cost 15 to 20,000 pounds to replace. It's actually an incredibly tight and fiddly job to fit this engine. There's hardly any room between the firewall behind the turret and the center brace between the radiators and the gearbox. Um, and getting it onto the water rail, you've got millimeters of clearance, but uh, we manage it with a bit of, a bit of graft. I'm just thrilled I didn't drop it on Jack and kill him, or worse, smash the engine. Right, so now that the engine's now back in the tank, we can actually refit the oil filter and the generator, um, which we shall do now. Those teeth that look like a horse would get through that, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, 
Fuck horse. Fuck horse, mate. One new all stock belt. Brand new. <laughs> June 1989. Beautiful. Fitting the generator on one of these engines is a real pain in the backside. They're ever so heavy, and there's only a single dowel that actually locates it in the right place. And it is an utter, utter nightmare to get in with the belt on, especially when the belt's brand new and tight as a tight thing. You need to lift the back, and I can't push it towards me. That's it, and that's that. Now I need to go back slightly. <laughs> slightly? That's it, a bit more man. That ain't a million miles out, or it's... Jack was quite wrong. We must have had a good 25 minutes fitting this thing. Eventually me and Jack finished bickering and managed to fit it properly. Right, so that's the engine in now. Uh, the last few things we've got to do is a couple of uh, bolts just to bolt it back to the water rail each side, but it is in place. Um, once we've done that, we've got a few bits to do. We've got the exhaust manifolds to fit, they're up there, all painted nice and shiny, ready to go. Um, we've got new water pipes, well not new water pipes, we've redone the water pipes. New bits of plastic pipe, looking real nice. Silicon. Silicon, silicon pipes, come on Jack. Um, they've got to go in the back here, leading up to the rads, as you can see, and then it's time for the clutch and the gearbox. We do have to strip the clutch to bits, clean it all up, new, uh, new clutch pack. Plates. Clutch, yeah. New clutch plates and clean everything up in there, put it all back together. We, wait, we are waiting for a seal for the back of the engine, between the clutch and the engine. Once that's with us, we can then start banging it all back together. Um, we have got to repaint, repaint the gearbox because we've, uh, we've sorted that out and we've got to just paint a few more bits and bolts to go back in it. But apart from that, we're ready to rebuild. Right, see you in the next video.